Hey folks! So today I thought we would have a look at waterfall formation. Now, unlike some schools who are perhaps perhaps those ones situated near High Force on the River Tees, um, don't have the luxury of many waterfalls um, near us. And that's because there's something that happens in the upper course of a river and we obviously live um, and go to school near an estuary which is at the lower course of a river. So this might be something that you've perhaps struggled with um, in the past. But I'm going to make it really easy today. I'm going to start with um, the first stage. There's four stages in total. So if you put one, two, three and four on your page. Now it's helpful but not essential uh, if you've got any colours today. Um, two colours really just to point out the difference in the rock types uh, would be ideal but it's as I said it's not absolutely essential. So as I said um, waterfalls happen in the upper course now on the at the first stage if you just draw kind of a fairly straight line like this and then another line this way now we're going to use um, colours to show this but we're also going to use letters so if you put MR on this side and LR on this side. So MR is to show more resistant rock and this is LR is for less resistant rock. If that's too difficult and you think actually those words are a bit tricky, I'd rather do hard rock and soft rock, then uh, please feel free to change it. So what we've got, I'm gonna use a, a blue highlighter for this. Um, is we've got our, our river essentially flowing in this direction. You'll notice I've drawn it quite steep. <clears throat> and um, I'm gonna use just, just gent, I'm not gonna shade it completely, I'm just gonna use some lines to show the different colors. So I'm gonna use a dark brown for my more resistant, harder rock, and, a, and an orange for my less resistant. And what we've got here is quite a steep slope as we're up in that upper course of the river and we've got um, vertical erosion going on so not lateral not side to side vertical erosion downwards erosion okay and we just need to jot a couple of things down so let's write waterfalls occur uh, in the upper let me put that in capitals uh, upper course of a river. Okay, we don't see them in the middle course or the lower course. Um, and it's what what happens basically in this upper course is it goes from this more resistant rock towards a less resistant rock. And it's when that happens that we see waterfalls start to occur. So let's continue with our drawing. Let's add the next stage. So we've got the same sort of straight line and then another one this way. But now I'm going to start to introduce a bit of a curve, okay? Can I put my, um, my river back in there? So you can, hopefully you can see that. If it's not film, just a little bit thicker so you can see it a bit more clearly. There we go. And again, we're going to pop in our less resistant and more resistant rock. You can do that on your one as well. It is all about the rock with this one. The rock and, and erosion, of course. Now what we're looking for here, what we want to, to notice, you can see where it's just turning the corner, just draw a little arrow here, um, is a step. This is um, the long profile of a river and it's the step in the long profile. That's where they start. And then what happens is this less resistant rock, which as we know is softer, that gets eroded by something called hydraulic action, which is the same type of erosion as we talk about with coasts. So it's the force of the water, it's the force of the water that is breaking down the rock. So let's write that in there. 
so less resistant rock is eroded by you could just say uh, erosion but I think if you're trying to achieve a slightly higher grade and if you want to try and get full marks on a question like this then you want to actually say hydraulic action and remember hydraulic action is the force of the water okay I'll put in brackets it's vertical ero um, erosion it's happening going downwards okay on to step three so again we're starting from the same point as the others um, so we're going to have that more, res we've had a lot more erosion now, so we're going to draw a kind of plunge pool, there we go. We're going to put our line in like we had it before, okay, we're going to have our more resistant rock there, our less resistant rock here. We've got this new line now, which goes something like that, okay. So again, we've got our river flowing down. I'll colour this in. This is something called a plunge pool. So when it's eroded enough of that um, soft rock, that less resistant rock away, it actually creates a bit of a pool. So again, we've got our less resistant rock there. Okay, and our more resistant rock there. Okay. And I'm just going to another arrow there, plunge, pull, okay. Um, so as the water flows um, over the step, uh, what happens is it, it speeds up, it's falling, so the velocity that the water is travelling at increases, which causes rapid hydraulic action, so it's just even faster, the force of the water is even quicker, and that then creates this plunge pull. So we're going to write that as the water flows over the step, its velocity, that word just, basically I'm going to put it in brackets, means speed, um, increases. So it goes faster, it increases causing in capitals, rapid hydraulic action. Um, which erodes a deep plunge pool. Now if you ever do get the chance to go up close to a waterfall, perhaps if you're um if you've been to Iceland with me or uh, anywhere else, um this is the most dangerous section. So as one in Iceland, we get to walk actually behind. It was featured in a, in a James Bond movie. I'm always really nervous of this bit because they're actually, they're really deep and it's not just the depth, it's the water coming in fast from above um, is violent. And, you know, people do die in, dun in plunge pools. Um, they are the, the trickiest bit of, um, of a waterfall. You might think we're done there, but we're not. There's more. So stage four is the same sort of um, curve. We'll just draw that in. There we go. And remember, we've got that line. We've got our more resistant rock on this side, our less resistant rock beneath. And I'm actually going to draw in some... These are meant to be kind of boulders and things that kind of sit in the bottom of the plunge pool. And what's happened, I don't know if I can perhaps draw it like this. This, this bit here has fallen in, okay? That's what happens. So as the waterfall, it creates this plunge pool and basically as it erodes, it erodes, it erodes. Eventually, it digs away at that less resistant rock and the more resistant rock becomes overhanging, becomes heavy and eventually over time it will break away and when it does that, 
so draw an arrow like this, the waterfall retreats. It actually moves backwards. Not many things um, in life that do that. Cliffs can do it as well, actually, speaking of. You know, cliff retreat does something quite similar. Yeah, it moves backwards. So if you just once again colour in your more resistant, less resistant rock. So this would have been, you know, it would have, it would have been the more resistant rock, but it's, as I said, it's fallen in. Um, and again, if you just pop your river falling in, maybe you want to draw the cascading waterfall. There we go, there's our plunge pool, and there's our river. Just carrying on. Okay, so we need to summarise that, don't we, that last section. So if we say, eventually, and this happens, you know, over time, long, long time, the overhang... Will actually collapse, causing the waterfall to retreat. So it actually moves backwards. Now, when it retreats, the sides are still there. I don't know if you can imagine that, but you've, you've got the sides of the waterfall are still there. It's just the top section of rock that's gone. And that's called a gorge. So it leaves a formation called a gorge. And at high force, up in the River Tees, there is a wonderful example of a gorge. So leaving a steep gorge. Not very good if you've fallen in, quite hard to jump out. So you imagine it's just flat rock either side, leaving a steep gorge. Um, so the collapsed material that falls down into the bottom of the plunge pool, that, that'll get eroded over time. Okay, it'll just they'll bump into each other, they'll get um like abrasion, they'll get worn down, and also the force of the water will wear them down as well. So we'll just put that in. The collapsed material erodes by a process called abrasion. Okay, and there you have it, your four stages of waterfall formation.